how to create an interactive attendance sheet in Excel. This is what we're going to see in today's video. Here, as you guys can see, we have basically three different status. The first one, P, that stands for presence, A, that is absence, and also H, that stands for holiday. And whenever you change here any value to P, for example, as you guys can see, you're going to have a greenish color. Whenever you change to A, for example, you're going to have this reddish color, and H, you're going to have a yellow one. Or, of course, you can create here the pattern that you like to use. So you don't need to follow the colors that I'm using here. You can use your own colors that you want to use here. To the left, you have the names. And then here, as the first row of the headers, you have the weeks. Week 1, 2, 3, and 4. And in the next row here, we have the date specifically, and the, the month, the day, and also the, the year. And here in the next row, we have basically the titles of each one of the columns that we have. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and so on, so on. Here I'm using from Monday to Friday, but you can also use Monday to Sunday or also another pattern that you like to use. And here all the way to the right, you have the total. Basically here we are adding up all the values or all the presences that we have in the first row. And also here we have the absences that is counting for us all the absences that I have here in the first row and also all the holidays that we have in the first row. That way we can control a manager. How many times, let's say here, John, Anna, Mary, and so on and so on, has as the presence, absence, and also here uh, the holidays. And whenever you change any value here in the, the spreadsheet, you can see here to the right the totals or also the highlight of uh, the colors, you can see that's going to be automatically changed for you. And Whenever you need a new spreadsheet to another month, for example, to a new month, here I have the January month, but I also here I have the February one. And whenever you need a new spreadsheet, you can create it within five seconds. So you don't need to create all over again, step by step from scratch. No, within five seconds, we can have another new spreadsheet where we can put a new month, for example. I'm going to stop rumbling here and let's take a look on how can we do it step by step from scratch. Let's go. The first thing that we can start with is to give a name to our spreadsheet. So let me right click here just over the spreadsheet and then I can go rename. Uh, let's say this one here is going to call January because each one of the months that I have, I want to create a new spreadsheet. But of course, you don't want, you don't want to need to create from scratch a new spreadsheet every time that you have a new month. You can duplicate the spreadsheet and just rename the sheet itself. Uh, after it, let's uh, stick here, let's say with the row number four, and here I'm gonna type it in the names, or name, for example. The first name that I can input here, for example, is John Poe, and then let's say Anna Johnson, and so on, so on. So I, keep, I can keep adding names here, then, in the same row here, row number four, I want you to type it in Monday and then Tuesday and then Wednesday and so on and so on. But instead of doing it manually, I can select here the Monday cell and click in the down right corner of the cell and drag to the right. That way Excel continues to create the sequence for me and I'm gonna stop here on Friday like this. If you want to consider as the first week, Monday up to Sunday, for example, of course you can do it. You can just keep the sequence like this, but I'm going to stick with Monday to Friday, okay? And then just here above this, this days of the week, I can type it in the date. I know that I want to start this spreadsheet on January 1st of 2024, for example, and I know that January 1st of 2024 is equal to Monday. If you don't know uh, the date, exactly the the day of the week of a date that you have, you can do something like this. You can look up for in the calendar, of course, but you can also do, for example, January 1st of 2024. Let's check what, uh, what day of the week the dates correspond. So equal sign that's text, for example, double click here, and then I can select this date right here, comma, open quotations mark, D, 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 three times the letter D, close quotations, close parentheses, and enter. As you guys can see, it's Monday, so that way you can check if the date that you need is or not Monday, Tuesday, and uh, whatever. Now let me select here all these cells right here. I'm going to merge and center all the cells together to make a bigger cell. I can go here to the Home tab and then click here in this button, Merge and Center, like this for example. And I'm going to do something similar here to this uh, row above. I can select here all the cells and merge and center together again because here I'm going to use as my first week or my week 01 for example. Now it's 
almost done, but uh, I need to input here more three different weeks, the week number two, three, and four. So I can select here everything and then Control C to copy, here to the right, Control V to paste. Or instead of do it, I can do something more, something smarter, for example. With this date right here, I can equal sign and then select the previous date, add to seven days. That way I am gonna have the next, the next Monday date, for example, enter such this. And the week, I can just click here, hold and drag to the right. And here we got the week number two, for example. But let me continue to do, to copy and paste, Control C, Control V, Control C, Control V. Now here, week two, I'm gonna have then the week three and then the week four, such this, for example. Let me select here now the column B, C, D, and I'm gonna decrease a little bit the size of the columns. I'm gonna select here to the column U, for example. I'm gonna right click here in the column, and I'm gonna go to the column width, and maybe I can change to, let's say, five, and press enter. And I think now it's good. One more thing that I can do here that's gonna improve a lot the expression, is select everything here in the, in the area, just below here, the redders, because this area is where we're gonna put the presences, the absences, and the holidays, for example. And uh, with everything selected, I can centralize here everything, put, let's say, borders, all borders, like this. And I can also do the same thing here for the columns where I have the names. So I can select everything, put everyone here with borders, centralize everything, and that's it. Now, another thing that I can do here that, uh, that, I, that is easy to do and uh, gives us a pretty good look in here in this spreadsheet is to remove these right lines that basically split the columns to the rows. I can go to the view tab and right lines, I can read it off this option. I can uncheck this box right here. Now another thing, let's say I can select here everything in the headers and I can put everyone in bold. I can do the same thing here for the name, put in bold. And I can also choose a different color such as this orange right here and select also everything here in the same row and use the same color. Now to the row just above, I can use a darker color, such as this one right here. And for the row above, or the row where I have the weeks, I can also increase a little bit the, the darkness of the, this orange that I have. Okay, now I think it's good. Our spreadsheet is almost there. But now we can add something to make sure we can add the presence, the absences, and the holidays. So, talking about it, I can use the, these three letters to represent the absence. I can use the letter A to represent the presence. I can use the letter P. And of course, holidays, I can use the H letter to represent the holidays. I can use this scheme right here, this pattern here. So let's say here, John got a, got a presence on Monday and Anna also got a presence. But let's say in Tuesday, we had a holiday. So we're gonna put here H. And on Wednesday, John uh, had a presence, but Anna had an absence. And then here on Thursday and Friday, both had presence, like such as this, for example. Now to make something more interesting and more easy to look at, instead of just using letters here, we can also continue to use the letters. And moreover, we can uh, add some highlights here, add some colors. So let's say the P I want to highlight with a green color because it's the presence. The H is not exactly an absence, so I want to highlight it with a yellow color. But the A that represents an absence, I want to highlight with a head color, for example. So I can select here everything, and then I can go to the Home tab and using some conditional formatting. I can click here and highlight cells rules. I can choose this option right here, equal to, because here I can input, let's say, let's start with the presence, so P. Everything that is equal to P is going to be highlighted with a green color, such as this, for example. Okay, now another highlight that we can do here is in the same, in the same place, the same option, equal to, but instead of using P, we can use H, that represents the holidays. And here I can choose a yellow field with dark yellow text. And the last one is going to be the absences. So let me click here, highlight cells rules, equal to, and A. Here, yeah, 
this one right here, the first option. Okay, so here we got a more visual way to visualize the data. Whenever now I enter here P or A or H, for example, as you guys can see, automatically this value right here is going to be highlighted for us. This is the benefit to use conditional format in Excel. Now the last thing that we can do here, okay, of course, I can fill it in here with uh, some random, random names and uh, some random presences and uh, holidays and so on and so on. So you guys show uh, see how it's gonna it's gonna be when uh, everything here is gonna be filling in. I'm gonna do it, but uh, before I do it, let's here to the right, let's say in the column W, for example, I can count uh, all the presents, all the holidays, and all the absences, or basically count the P, the H, and the A's. So to do it, in the, as the first column here, the column W, I can type it in here, uh, presents because I'm going to count everything that is equal to presence, equal to P. In the column X, I'm going to count the absence, uh, this sense, I think uh, it's correct that way, and uh, also the holidays. Okay, now something that I can do here, I can select here everything in this in the row in the, in the row above, and I can go to the home tab and put everyone here with everything, with borders, put everything in bold, and centralize also everything. Now I can select the column W, X, and Y and increase a little bit the size of the column. Now in this first row here above, I can uh, merge and centralize everything. And then I can type it in here, uh, total, maybe. Or you can also, the overall count, something like this, you know, because here we can add up all the values that represent the presence, the absence, and the holidays. Here in the total, I want to also use a different color such as this one right here, maybe. Yeah, I think it's good. Now let me select here everything again to the last row that I'm gonna use here, and then home tab, and I'm gonna put everything with uh, borders. And I can centralize again everything to make sure everyone is aligned with the middle, with the center of the cell. To count everything that is equal to P, I can use maybe the equal sign count function, but the count function is gonna count, is gonna add up, everything that I have, but I don't want to exactly add up everything, but just the P letter. To do it, instead of using the count if function, I need to use the count if function, because the count if function is going to count, is going to add up the values if a criteria uh, is met, for example, or are met. The range that I'm going to use to count can be this first row right here, all the values that make up my first row, and then I can type it in comma, my criteria right here is going to be equal to the letter P. But to input here the letter P, I need to quote P unquote like this. Close parentheses and then enter. Now I can click here in the down right corner of the cell, hold and drag down to make sure now all the rows contain the same function. Now let's move on here to the absence and it's pretty much the same thing. The post sign count if function, but what you're going to change here is the criteria. The range is going to remain the same is the first row. Comma, but the criteria now is equal to A. Uh, and don't forget, be mindful about the quotations mark, okay? Enter. Now the holidays, equal sign, count. Or, to be faster, let me go here the function that I did before, Control C, click here in the holidays, double click, Control V. Instead of using A, I'm gonna use H, because it stands for holidays. Enter. Now we can select here both, double click here in the down right corner of the cell, and we're done. So this is how we can do this function to count the presences, the absences, and the holidays. And that's it. Now, we are already done with this spreadsheet, but I'm gonna show you how can we do the same spreadsheet for February, March, April, and so on, so on, uh, with, uh, within one second. And uh, I'm also gonna show you how can uh, this spreadsheet is gonna look like when you fill in all the rows and all the columns with the information about the attendances, okay? So, I came back in one second. Okay, I just filled in here the spreadsheet with uh, all the names that I'm gonna use, and also with the presence, the absence, and also the holiday that we had in Thursday and Friday. And basically we're done with this spreadsheet, it's complete. Now what I can do here, the, the January month, let's say it's complete, now I need to create the same exactly spreadsheet to the February month, but I don't want to do it all over again. So I'm gonna show you how can we do it in maybe within five seconds. And here to the right, just to show you uh, here, 
we have the total of the presents, absence, and also the holidays, and uh, it's working fine. And uh, as you can see, the holidays uh, are equal to two, and are equal. Ever everyone here got two because we only had here two holidays in the January, for example. So everything here is equal, and uh, it's working. It's working perfectly. Now to create another spreadsheet that is exactly like this within a couple of seconds. You can do something like this, for example, you can click here in the January spreadsheet, okay? You can click here, I'm clicking, and then you click, hold the click with the mouse and also press the control key because that way you can duplicate this spreadsheet, okay? So control key, hold, click in the spreadsheet and move to the right, like this. That way you can duplicate the spreadsheet and that one right here is going to be uh, to the February month. So right click, rename, February, enter. And something like that I can do here to let's say erase all the spreadsheet is select everything that I have here as the presence as the attendance I can select here everything and then delete and also here the week is gonna always be the week the first week the month okay it's gonna change so here I have February 1st of 2024 of course you just need to check if uh, the February 1st is equal to the first uh is equal to monday i don't know if it's equal to monday so let's check here just to make sure huh? let's say general uh, february 1st of 2024 equal text i'm gonna select here this value comma ddd three times close for the quotations close parentheses and is equal to tuesday okay so let me read it off this so here monday it's not exactly january but uh, it's january not february Something that I can do here, maybe painting with a grayish color, such as this. And also here, all the column with a grayish color, like this. And yeah, with that. Now, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope this spreadsheet can help you out. And don't forget to save your spreadsheet, clicking here in the diskette. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you have any questions or any suggestions to the next ones, let me know, comment down below, and i see you tomorrow. As every day has a new video, i see you there.